Today, we're gonna to take a look at setting up a command line tool that I've wanted to play with for quite a while now. You may remember the folks at Charm, charm.sh is their website. In a recent video, we looked at the gum library they have for making great shell scripts. Well, instead of one of their libraries, we're gonna look at one of their applications today. So the application that we're gonna look at is called soft serve, and this is a Git server. So I wanna host my own Git server. One of the really cool things about soft serve is that it's more than just a Git server. It also has an interactive UI, a terminal UI that you can use to browse your repos. Let's take a look at setting this up. If we click on soft serve here, we're taken to the GitHub repo and they have some instructions here for going ahead and just installing this locally. But I have a different approach that I want to take. We're going to install it in a Docker container on my home server. Recently started setting up a home server and this is one of the things I want to use it for. So let's go ahead and SSH into my home server. And if we take a look at what's going on on this server already, you can see I've got a couple of things running. We have Nginx running, which is just a reverse proxy for some of the other services. We've got Pihole and we've got Home Assistant. So these are already running here. And so we're going to set up a new Docker container that's running beside these other ones. Right now, I've got a very basic setup. I've got a folder for each one of these services. So let's go ahead and make a soft serve folder. And in here, let's create a docker compose.yaml file. Now, I don't think you want to watch me type all of this out, so I've just pasted it in, but let's take a look at what this is doing. So we're creating a service here that we're going to call soft serve, of course. We're using the standard image, charm CLI slash soft serve latest tag and we'll just call this container soft serve. Now we want to make sure that all the data will be stored outside the container so we're going to mount a volume here. We're going to mount the slash data directory in this soft serve directory on our server and we'll just mount that to slash soft serve inside of the container. Now the port that soft serve uses by default is 23231. I actually want to mount that to a different port outside 8082. So I'm going to put that to 8082 and we're going to use 23231 on the inside. So let's go ahead and save this. Actually before we do I think I need to fix the indentation there. So now we can start this up with docker compose up dash D to detach it. And we give this just a second and we'll see, all right, we've created our soft serve container. So let's do docker PS and we can see this is now running. We're mapping port 8082 on the outside to 23231 on the inside. Let's give this a test run now. I'm going to open a new window here in Tmux. And what we can do is clone a special repository that soft serve has built in. And this is the config repository. So we're going to do git clone ssh colon slash slash. Now I happen to know that my home server is running on 192.168.0.105. If you're following along on your own server, you'll want to put its IP address in there. Or if you're just doing this on your local machine, you can just use localhost instead. And we know that we said port 8082 and the repo is called config. So let's go ahead and clone this down. I'll say yes, that's good. So let's CD into the config repository here and look at what we've got. We've got a readme file here, which is pretty straightforward. So let's look and set at the config.yaml. We've got a bunch of configuration here. As you can see, we've got the host in the port showing up right here. One thing we want to do is change this port to be 8082. And we've also got a name soft serve here. Why don't we call this for fun Andrew's projects? Now there's a couple of other things that we could change here. We've got some user setup that we could do. And we also have anonymous access. So these are things that if you are running this in a public environment, maybe you want to change. Now the anonymous access thing is kind of cool. It allows you to basically give anyone a terminal UI that they can use to browse your projects. Let me show you what I mean by this. I'm going to open a new terminal window here. We're going to do SSH into git.charm.sh. So this is an SSH based application, which means that if we SSH into this server, we now have a terminal UI that we can use to actually browse these repositories. Now this is Charm's own Git server that we're looking at. So we're going to See their own projects. We could go into the Wish project here. We can read all about it in the README. We can tab over to the files and take a look at, say, something in logging. And we can actually take a look at the logs. We could choose to go over to the commit history and take a look at a diff, something like that. So it's all pretty cool. Now, because I'm just logging into this as an anonymous user, I don't have access to actually write anything. By default, you can see that anonymous access is read write. So we're probably going to want to change that to read only. But first, we're going to have to configure a new user here. So let's go ahead and uncomment one of the users here. And of course, I'm going to call this user Andrew, and we're going to need to give it a public key, it looks like. I know I have a public key here, so I'm just going to do a PB copy to copy that to my system clipboard. And then in here, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. All right. So now that I have that user configured in anonymous access here, I can change this to read only. So with those changes in place, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll make a commit that says updated config. 
and then we'll go ahead and we'll push that. So it should be just that simple. We should just be able to push the config and have that figured out. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and test the terminal UI. Let's see. So we're going to SSH to this host and we're going to use this port. And now you can see we're in the terminal UI. Now notice up at the top, it says Andrew's projects, which is exactly the name we gave it. Notice also that the example clone command that we have here shows the host and the port that we had. So we changed that to 8082. Now we didn't change the host name. This example command here is not correct. So let's go ahead and update that. If we open up our config file once again here, and we can update this to 192.168.0.105. All right, so let's say update host name and go ahead and push that. And now if we once again SSH into this, you can see that our git clone command here shows the correct IP address. So how about creating a new repository here? Let's go ahead and move to my dot files project, of course. And if we do git remote dash V, you can see that currently the only remote that we have is my GitHub remote. What we're going to do git remote add. We're going to add a new one and I guess we can call this soft for now. And we're going to add the SSH URL to our repository and we'll have to include our port in there 8082 and then we'll say slash dot files. So we've added our remote and we can do get remote dash V to see that that is actually there. So let's do git push to soft and we want to push the main branch. Excellent. Look at that. We've just created a new repository. Now to see that we could go ahead and SSH back into this. One thing I think I might want to do to make that a little bit easier is add something to my SSH config file. So let's go ahead and add a new host here called soft. I'll add a user, which is Andrew. I'll add my host name, which is the same as I've got for Ubuntu right here. But the main difference is the port, which is 8082. So we can save and close that. And now I should be able to do SSH soft and we're right directly into my projects. Cool. So now you can see we've got home. We've also got dot files. If we go into dot files, move over to the files, we could actually say, take a look at my Alacrity config, or maybe we could take a look at some of the commits, for example, Here's a recent commit I made to my Vim config, and we can actually take a look at that. Now, if you're not sure what commands you can use here in self-serve, you can use question mark to toggle this little cheat sheet at the bottom here. As you can see, I can use tab to switch between tabs, and this actually updates as I go. So if I'm on the file tab, then I can see I can use G to go to the end or lowercase G to go back to the top. If I go to commit here, you can see I can actually navigate and then I can press C to copy the hash or I could press right arrow in order to actually take a look at what that diff is. Now there's one more thing we could do here. Notice that dot files looks a little plain compared to the config repo that we have. So we can see config says home. It's got the little lock icon there. It has a nice little summary line here. We can go ahead and add that. So let's go back to our config here and let's open the config YAML and in repos here, let's just copy what we have for home. So this is going to be for the dot files repo. We'll call this dot files and let's see private. Um, I guess that little lock icon was because we have private set to true on that. Let's say I want to be able to share this repo. So I'm going to set private to false. And then in my notes here, I'll just say um, my personal dot files repo. So we'll go ahead and commit these changes updated uh, dot files repo config and we'll go ahead and push that and then we can SSH back into soft and now you can see that dot files is uppercase D here and my personal dot files repo. Cool. So now I have a local Git server that I can use for my personal projects. One thing I would love to do is set up a public version of this similar to git.charm.sh where anyone can browse whatever projects I'm working on. So if you guys think that would be an interesting video, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.